Silent breed is people! Welcome to The Internet Says It's True, a show where we learn something new every week. So welcome, friends, enemies, birds of prey, barnyard animals, celestial navigating dung beetles, and porpoises undulating wildly. It's another week. And we have another topic. This one, I have to admit, has sort of a clickbaity title. Only because we're not talking about all Mexican food. We're talking about one Mexican food. But yes, we'll be talking about human sacrifice. It's a weird one. So strap in and let's listen to this show suggestion from Allison. Hey, Michael, it's Allison. I've been enjoying the podcast so much. I wonder if you're familiar with the sordid history of the Mexican dish pozole. I think if you look into that, you'll find out what I'm talking about. Thanks. You know how you try to read an online recipe and you have to scroll through pages and pages and pages of the history of all the food and the writer's first influence of that dish and how it reminds them of their first crush and how they met at the carnival and then they go on to describe all the things they saw that day and how inspired they were. And eventually it gets to a story about how they fell in love and this was the first dish they made in their new home. If you're not familiar, I'm going to read one of these. This is the first recipe that came up when I searched for pozole. And I want to make clear, I am in no way making fun of Mexican culture. I'm making fun of this white lady talking about a recipe for pages before listing the ingredients. Here it is. Years ago, when I spent a summer studying Spanish in Cuernavaca, Mexico, my Mexican teacher told me that it was much easier to pronounce the language properly if you smiled as you spoke it. She was right. Good thing Mexican food is so delicioso. Because just thinking about dishes like this pozole makes me smile. It's somewhat of a feast pozole. I guess you could make smaller batches, but since you have to cook it for several hours, it just makes sense to make a large amount and then have lots of friends over with whom to enjoy it. I made this for my parents and they loved it. Mom told me she hadn't had pozole since she was a kid in Tucson. Lots of smiley faces around the table tonight. That uh, is the type of thing you read for like ever before they start listing ingredients. So being that I'm looking for the story behind Pozole, it's not the recipe I'm after. It's the history. So I actually have to read a few of these ridiculous intros to find what we're looking for. So let's see here. Oh, oh, I see what they're talking about. There it is. (laughs) Okay, strap in. This one is nuts. First, let's talk about Pozole. Pozole is a traditional Mexican stew. Some people call it a soup, but I would refer to it as a stew with the basic ingredients of hominy and pork or beef with chiles, garlic, radishes, avocado, salsa, or limes, then topped with shredded lettuce or cabbage and chopped onions. It's a very popular dish with a long and rich history in Mexico. Hominy is just corn, but prepared in a special way. The white field corn kernels are dried then soaked in a solution with lye or slaked lime to break down the cell walls and soften the corn. After that, it's thoroughly cleaned and dried again. It looks sort of like a white, expanded, blown-up version of a kernel of corn. So hominy is the base grain of pozole, and it's cooked for hours in this stew of ingredients, chili peppers or a puree of chili peppers and other ingredients to give it its unique spicy flavor. It's most commonly either red, green, or white, depending on the style and the region it's served in. It's a dish that's common at special events like New Year's Eve, Mexican Independence Day, birthdays, and other holidays. It's a warm dish perfect for a cold day, and it's got a really crazy backstory. But before we get into that, let me tell you a backstory. The jacket on my back is also perfect for a cold day. It's a Scotty vest. Segway. As you all know, uh, I am excited to be partnered with Scotty Vest, and I want you all to have 15% off of your next purchase at Scotty Vest. Go to the website, please. Take a minute and go to scottyvest.com and check out some of these cool clothes because they look just like normal clothes. Like Ali and I are planning a trip, and I literally just put my Scotty Vest Tropiformer jacket in the bag because I don't know what the weather's going to be like. And it's one of those jackets that's just sort of great for all purpose, and it packs really small. All of these clothes have tons of pockets, like functional pockets, like a cell phone pocket designed for a cell phone, or a key pocket with a clip where you can clip your keys in, or a glasses pocket with an attached lens wipe. 
really thoughtful clothing. Go to scottyvest.com, use my promo code Tell Me, all one word, T E L L M E, and that'll get you 15% off your order. That's scottyvest.com, enter promo code Tell Me. Well, I think it's safe to say that virtual stuff is not going away. Even though in person events are happening, people are having meetings in person again and having events. I don't know if it's a blessing or a curse, but Zoom meetings aren't going anywhere. We're going to still be having them. And while we're still having them, that means we're also going to be having Zoom presentations and Zoom shows. And I want you to be successful at those. I want you to have the best presentation online that you can. And the best way to learn all that is by going to Virtual Presenter Course. I'm talking about getting away from the boring meetings where it's just a Brady bunch of talking heads putting everyone to sleep. But here's the thing. If I told you the software to use and just download it and you'll take it from there, that's not going to help you at all because you have to learn how to use this stuff. And there's a pretty substantial learning curve to some of it. So that's where Virtual Presenter Course helps you. It's step-by-step -step instructions that even non-tech savvy people understand, and it'll help turn your presentations into a virtual broadcast studio in your home. Just go to virtualpresentercourse.com slash 30 or use the link in the show notes. I promise you're going to like what you see. It's virtualpresentercourse.com slash 30. Let's get back to the show. For this next part of the episode, we're going to switch gears and move to a time and era from a long time ago. We're going to talk about the pre-Columbian Mesoamerican time and a people known as the Aztecs. So this was in the area we now know as the central and northern part of Mexico in the 14th, 15th, and 16th century all the way up until the Spanish conquered Mexico and the Aztecs in 1521. They were believed to have started as a nomadic people, hunters and gatherers whose name came from the name of their home, Aztlan, said in their language, which was Nahuatl. Many Spanish words have their origin in Nahuatl and were then adopted by the Spanish after their invasion of the area. Words like chili, avocado, peyote, and chocolate all started as Nahuatl words from the Aztecs. They had a festival every February and March called Atla Cajualo. The purpose of the festival was to honor Tlaloc, the god of rain. In a harvest-based culture, praying to rain gods was important to them. Then once the food would be harvested, they would have a feast called, okay, give me a second with this one, and there was a lot of symbolism with this feast. Religious symbolism in foods is seen throughout history and throughout every major religion. For Catholics, there is of course the Eucharist, where the wine represents the blood of Jesus. And yes, I realize that if one believes in transubstantiation that this isn't symbolic, it's literal, but I digress. Did you know the shape of pretzels is supposed to represent a child's arms folded in prayer? Baklava is supposed to be made with 33 layers of dough representing the 33 layers of Jesus' life. The shape of dumplings has a Taoist beginning. It's supposed to represent money, like money-related objects such as Chinese measuring weights. And the Jewish Hanukkah treat of Sufganiyot is a pastry filled with jelly, and that jelly represents the miracle of oil, like when the oil lamp lit for eight days. Here's where things get a little weird, so trigger warning if you are squeamish. Like other Mesoamerican religions, the Mayans come to mind, the Aztecs practiced human sacrifice. So during that feast of Tlaxipayahualashti, they would offer to the gods ears of corn and a human sacrifice. Forty days prior to the sacrifice, a person would be chosen, often a prisoner from an enemy party which had been captured. Pieces of human flesh were carved and consumed. The heart was offered to the gods, and the rest of the body would be put into a ceremonial pot of pozole. When you read something like this, you have to be very careful because we know that gruesome stories like this one have been used throughout time to denigrate peoples. For example, an Islamic preacher on the Temple Mount in 2015 made the false and inflammatory statement that Jews cooked children's blood into their Passover bread. There are sometimes cultural feuds and prejudices that create harmful lies about culture. So as a white person, I wanted to be very careful about this story. But it is 100% true according to Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History. It's also referenced in a 16th century book called General History of the Things of New Spain, written by Fray Bernardino de Sahagún. It's worth noting that when the Spanish conquered the Aztecs, they outlawed the practice of cannibalism. In his book, Sahagún writes that they began using pork in the meal 
because of its similar taste to human flesh. Now, it's also important to say here that this wasn't how pozole was eaten all the time in Aztec culture. It was reserved for ceremonial times. Not that that makes it any better that they're eating people, but it wasn't all the time. When it wasn't a ceremony, the meat in the pozole was typically provided by a rodent called the tepes quintle, which we would now call a paca. It looks kind of like a miniature combination of a guinea pig, a deer, and a pig. So, non-ceremony, they're eating pozole with paca. Special occasion, they're eating pozole with people. So next time you enjoy a nice ham steak or a steaming bowl of pozole, you've got something to think about and an interesting story to tell your friends. Well, now it's time for the part of the podcast where I call a friend and quiz them. And today I've got a special treat for you. It's my brother, Kyle. He is a doctor of food science. So for a food-based episode, I thought we would catch up with him. He lives with his family in New Jersey and he is here to play the quiz. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm good. You're the second family member to join the podcast because I had Allie on a few weeks ago. Uh, and so, sorry, she lives with me, so she comes first. You yeah. came first in terms of uh, in my life. You know, you were there when I was born. Yeah, but you see all these gray hairs? Those are all yours. I, listen, uh, I've got them too. <laughs> I've got them too. <laughs> Allie, Allie said to me the other day, she was like, you need some just for men. And I'm like, I love my gray hair. You know, I, yes. I, I think it, it's distinguishing. I think it was Grecian formula when we were growing up, wasn't it? Wasn't that the brand? I don't remember that. I, I remember just for men. I don't, just I don't. For men. Well, uh, our listeners have just learned about this topic, but I haven't talked to you about it. Uh, so right. we're going to go through the, for the, just for the meat of the topic for this first question. And then after the first question, we'll get to some of the topics, the information that's new to all of us that the listeners don't know. And we don't know. So for this okay. first question, we are playing for a movie. That's the stakes. If you get it wrong, you have to sit the family down sometime in the next, I don't know, couple weeks and watch a movie of my choosing. Oh. If you get it right, Allie and I have to watch a movie of your choosing. Oh, so, I got a good one for you. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think this through well enough, I guess, because uh, I'm going to have to sell Allie on whatever you come up with. And we're currently rewatching Downton Abbey right now. I yeah, am, my, uh, my choice is a little little more severe than Downton Abbey, I would uh -oh. say. Oh, no. Okay. Well, here's the question. Pozole is a Mexican stew made with hominy, chilies, spices, and a meat like pork. But for the ancient Aztecs, the meat in the dish wasn't pork. Which one of these was it? Was it A, horse, B, monkey, or C, people? Mm. Do we have some music? Is there a timer? <laughs> There's no timer. Um, and I will edit out the, the time that it takes to... Uh, <laughs> for <laughs> so the we'll, Aztecs... Yeah. Geez, I, I kind of want to say C, that it was people. I Fine. think I'll go C, people. You are correct. It is people. Before they started using pork, <laughs> uh, they used people, and, po and pozole was used in humans after human sacrifices. It was a special treat. Now, they did have pozole in non-ceremonial instances in which they used a rodent uh me but they did uh -huh. use people now when the spanish came during the great conquest of mexico they outlawed cannibalism and it is no longer people i thought it was funny phrasing that as people more than humans because it, there's a specific reason why i said people uh, greens <laughs> well that's soil green is people i was with my buddy wolf in uh in korea this was 11 years ago we were in korea in a market and we went to a stand that sold jerky and there's a hundred percent language barrier at this stand. Right. <laughs> Shoot. And you hear the, you hear the rumors about when you go to an Asian country, you know, the, yes. the denigrating rumors are that, Oh, they yes. eat dogs. And, you know, I had to go through training through with, with the group that sent me that yes, that there is a particular fancy delicacy in Korea that is dog. They're dogs that are specifically farmed for that reason, but it's very rare. It's very expensive. And you would know if you were eating it. And they even tell you what it's called on the Korean menu, just in case. So, but this was like one of our first days. So I said, what is this jerky? And they didn't quite understand, but they did. Un they knew what we were asking and what the woman said to me. So with the Korean language, 
they don't really end uh, many words on consonants. And okay. so she was saying beef jerky, but it sounded like beepa jerky, beepa jerky. <laughs> beepa jerky. <laughs> and it just and and I didn't say anything back. I didn't say, oh, that's what did you say? I just said, oh, OK, cool. And I just played it cool. And Wolf and I walked away and I go, yeah, I don't think I'm going to buy any of that because I'm not sure what's in it. And Wolf looks at me and he goes, yeah, I'll be damned if I'm going to eat people jerky. <laughs> 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 we had both heard the same thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, you both hear it, you can't, you can't have it. You can't do it, no. <laughs> All right. Well, you got that one right, which means Allie and I have to watch a movie of your choosing. Oh, I got a good one for you. Ready? Okay, what is it? I, I, I think this was on Netflix. I, I hope it's still there. It's called Train to Busan. Oh, Train to Busan on Netflix. It's a Korean movie. Okay. So that fits, that fits with the story. But uh, Train to Busan, it is a fairly intense zombie flick. Ooh. Uh, you have to watch it because it's subtitled. Yeah. Right? It's all in Korean. But one of the better zombie flicks out there. So and I know that you're a stickler for zombie canon because when when Walking Dead came out, you and I talked about this and you were saying that the, the Walking Dead did not stick to the traditional rules of zombie movies. Yeah, you know, this one doesn't stick to like the slow moving, shambling kind of zombies. Oh. But it's still pretty. It's still pretty sweet uh, movie. It's a little bit like 28 Days Later type of zombie. Okay. So, and and about that intense. So, I hope you and Allie have fun with that one. <laughs> she doesn't like movies that are that are scary. But I'll tell her this is because of the podcast, and I have to do it. <laughs> and she was first. Dang it. <laughs> yeah, she was on the podcast first. So this is what she gets. Uh, okay. Train to Busan. I have taken a plane to Busan, but I have not taken a train to Busan. Oh, yeah. so we'll I don't do think that. you want to take this train. Okay. So. <laughs> Question two. If you get this one right, you get to share an embarrassing or funny story about me from childhood. Oh. If I if you miss it, I get to share one about you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm going to say yet for that. Uh, so just get this one right. I'm not sure either. Okay. okay. We learned in this episode what hominy is. When it's okay. dried and ground, it makes masa flour. But when yep. it's chopped into small pieces, it's called what? Here are the options. A, cornmeal. B, okay. grits. Or C, bulgur. Hmm. When it's chopped into small pieces. Yeah, so it's going to be called grits. B. You, you are correct. It is grits. Um <laughs> You got that one right, and if you if you want, you can share an embarrassing or funny story about me from childhood. But you don't have to. We can just skip that. Funny story for you. Well, I was pretty hard on you, so I'm going to tell a story that's it's bad on me. It felt <laughs> funny, but it's more sad. But, uh, it's like a man called Buns. Sorry, like 40 years later, whatever. Kind of thing. <laughs> so, um, one we used to we used to fight a lot. If you don't remember. Uh, when we were kids, um, we played a lot, but we fought a lot too. And we were around the side of the house and we were playing with mud or something and you were yelling a lot. And I waited until you were yelling really loud with your mouth wide open. And I took a ball of mud and shoved it <laughs> in your mouth. And I thought that was great for a bit, but nowadays I feel really bad about it. So well, sorry about that one. Let me tell you what, uh, I don't think that I got COVID. And it very well could have been because of that. It could that, be. The effect of that mud on my immune system. Strengthening your immune system, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I have a few, but none of them are, are bad like that. I, I'm i going to tell one anyway, just in, just because you're on and, and, uh, right, and people good. will enjoy it. It's not a story necessarily as much as it is um, something that I find funny as an adult. You and I were very specific about the toys that we played with. Oh, yeah. And I don't know how this was established. I think because you were born first, no matter what it was, whether we were playing Masters of the Universe, G.I. Joe, uh, what else? Uh, Star Wars, any of these things. You were always the good guys and I was always the bad guys. And I had no say in that. And yeah. if if we were given a gift and it was the wrong one, we would get so mad. Like <laughs> if I got a good guy for Christmas by mistake, like if our grandparents bought us, a, you know, oh, this looks like whatever. And then they get it. And they give it to me and it's a good guy. We'd flip out and, and you would be, you know, that is, that is my team. I'm the yeah. good guys. He is the bad guys. This is a bad people, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
bad guys. Yeah, and I and I uh but I will say, especially with He Man, the bad guys were kind of better toys. Like they had some really cool stuff. They did. The guy that smells like skunks, I think he still smells like skunks today. Skunk you still have it? Yeah. His name wasn't very creative. No, they didn't still they didn't like a skunk. They didn't reach too far on that name. But I will never get over that uh you got the G.I. Joe aircraft carrier. Oh, that was awesome. The USS flag that was so big I could hide under it. Yes, it was awesome. <laughs> so ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> all right. That so was, that would work. It was, was probably 12 years old or something. I don't I know. It. The box was bigger than you were. I remember that. It, it was, was awesome. It was huge. Yeah. It was ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> so question three, the running prize that for this show for question three is always one of these stickers. It's a tell me what to Google sticker. That is not the name of this podcast, but it's what this podcast <laughs> used to be called. Um, and after I ordered the stickers, I changed the name of the podcast. So <laughs> next time you come into town, you'll get one of these bad boys or I can mail it out to you. Um, if you get this question, correct. Which Good. one of these was not an invention of the Aztecs? Ooh, okay. A chocolate. B smoking tobacco or C the game of horseshoes. Ooh, this is a hard one. This is a hard. This might be the hardest one of all of them. Then when you say chocolate, you mean like like a piece of chocolate? Well, like, chocolate like in general. Chocolate. Like just just chocolate as a as a food item. Like as in I went to the store and got a Hershey's bar of chocolate. I was not expecting you to get this specific on the chocolate question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to say chocolate because they, while well, they had cocoa and they made drinking chocolate, it's awful hot there. Um, a lot of the time, I would guess. I guess maybe in the higher elevations, maybe not. So I'm going to say it's chocolate. It's a trick question. I'm sorry. The answer, Kyle, <laughs> was the game of horseshoes. Oh, which was, was... yeah, <laughs> horseshoes came from the Cape of South Africa. Uh, but chocolate is attributed to the Aztecs, as is smoking tobacco. But I cannot tell you what kind of chocolate is attributed to the Aztecs. <laughs> so it may be a trick question, and I just don't know. That's uh, why I, I always missed that question on a test or something. Overthink it. Yeah, exactly. You got you got too much into it. Uh, so you won't get a sticker. I'm sorry when I see you oh, at Thanksgiving well, or Christmas. At least you get a watch train to Busan, so that's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> All right. Question number four is going to get you in trouble. You used right. to work for a company that manufactured chocolate type foods. Um, yes. And I, I don't know if you have a non-compete, but it rhymed with Wrestly. And if you get this question wrong, you have to share with us a trade secret from the chocolate industry. Not necessarily <laughs> okay. from that company. I don't want to get you, you know, sued. Uh, okay. And if you get it right, I'll share with you a secret of magic. Oh, okay. The, the film Indiana Jones Raiders of the Lost Ark begins with Indy searching for a golden idol that once belonged to the Aztecs. How does he retrieve the idol from its booby-trapped, weight-sensitive pedestal? How does he retrieve it? Yes. He, he uh, picked it up off the pedestal, replacing it with a bag of sand that he like carefully, like, is this the right weight? Whatever, and he puts his bag up there. And unfortunately, it wasn't the right weight because the pedestal depressed and then everything started going, going bad in a hurry. <laughs> That is all correct. Uh, I will share with you a secret of magic, and that secret is it's not real. None of it's real. The magician does really not make birds appear at his fingertips. They are in his coat. Yeah, in Indiana Jones, um, I, I went back and I watched that scene today because I was curious where he got the sand. And if you read the screenplay, he picked it up and filled the bag with sand from around the pedestal or dirt from around the pedestal. He doesn't do that in the movie. In the movie, he reaches into his bag, and for some reason, some inexplicable reason, he has a bag of sand with him. And we don't know why, I don't think. Unless it's earlier in the movie, and I just didn't watch that part today. And then he pours out some of the sand because he's, he's trying to figure out. But he doesn't know how much the idol weighs because he can't lift it yet. Uh, and, of course, he doesn't get it right. Now, that idol is based off of an actual Aztec fertility sculpture. Uh, that has been in a museum forever. However, very recently, it was determined it is a 19th century knockoff. It is not a real. <laughs> so it's a knockoff of a knockoff in the movie. 
Oh, it looked cool. Yeah, yeah, and it wasn't gold in real life. The one that they were, they I, I believe it was jade that they were, uh, that they were uh, modeling okay. it after. Yeah. They made some good uh, design choices. Gold, the gold idol was. A good oh, it was, it was perfect. It was perfect. Question five. This one is for all the marbles. If you get this wrong, I am banning you from my show, never to be asked on again. <laughs> I may not even visit you at Christmas. Uh, <laughs> if you get it right, of course you'll be back. What? Is a new food product that we should know about or be aware about? Oh, there are so many uh, very good new food products coming out. But the best, one of the best uh, food products you'll come across that you may not know about is called uh, Late July No Grain Tortilla Chips. These chips taste awesome. They, they scoop salsa just like a regular tortilla chip, and they taste great. But what, um, may or may not have worked on it. What? Who, what? Tell me the name of the Late July is the company. Late July is the brand. Is the brand? Yep. Late July, and and you say no grain. No grain. So we talked mean? about masa earlier. Yeah. Well, we don't need no stinking masa. They leverage uh, cassava flour. So cassava is another kind of a, a tuber root kind of thing that can be turned into a flour and you can make some really good tortilla chips out of it. And why would someone want a no grain tortilla chip? Because people are pursuing a grain free lifestyle, too much grain in your diet, that kind of thing. So at uh, places like whole foods, you'll see some no grain foods. And that's, uh, is that's different than gluten free. Grain free is different. It is gluten free. Oh, it is gluten free. but 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 it's also grain free. Okay. So there are some things that are grains that don't have gluten. Yeah. Interesting. Like like, like the corn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and but. and and I'm I'm curious. I don't know if if you're eating a bowl of pozole and it has people in it, mm. is that gluten-free? You know, it depends on how much grain they had before the <laughs> ceremony. <laughs> it depends and we're just talking about muscle because you got to cut that you got to clean okay now we're just this is free gross. range people or was well, it yeah green? this oh, is mesoamerican God. people they're all free range back then this is like 12th century stuff so kyle it has been so good to see you and thank you for for taking some time out of your evening please give my best to the family uh, i love you and i appreciate you coming on the show yeah i love you too thanks for having me on and uh don't forget train to busan train to busan Ali, ali's gonna love it <laughs> <All right. laughs> well that's all for this week thanks to allison for the show topic and kyle for being a guest go hit the patreon if you want to see the video unedited of my guest quiz with kyle or to hear bonus episodes. I've got another bonus episode almost finished right now, and it is a really good one. Also, if you learned something that you didn't already know from my show, please go over to iTunes and leave a review with five stars and a few words. That's the rule. You got to do it. That helps me a ton because that's how the algorithm works to get the podcast suggested to more people, and that way we can keep learning something new if the internet says it's true. The internet says it's true. We'd like to thank the Patreon subscribers whose monthly contributions put them at producer status. Sean Brown, Catherine Morgan, Taylor Hurt, Tony Ford, Bryce Swanson, Mitch Joseph Kemplin, Andrew Joseph Kemplin, Alan Sekulik, Eugene Anderson, Matt McVeigh, Jim Martin, and Joanne Martin. The show is written and produced by me, Michael Kent. The theme song is by Finite Music Forge, and additional music this week was from Carmen Maria, Edu Espinal, The Mini Vandals, and Zachariah Hickman. All audio clips from this episode are used for education and commentary and used under fair use Title 17 USC Section 107. You can listen to past episodes by searching for The Internet Says It's True wherever you get your podcasts, and you can see bonus content at patreon.com slash Michael Kent.